Are you making things too hard on yourself when you're trying to paint glass? Yes, most likely you are. So come along with me and let's find the three easy steps to paint anything. Hi and welcome. This is Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm going to help you learn to paint glass, which is the same as learning to paint a rock, learning to paint smoke, learning to paint a leaf, learning to paint a flower. It's all the same. All you have to know is how to separate out your light, your dark, and your midtone. So I've got a, a glass right here. And you go, but that's really hard. Why would I start painting clear glass? Because really it's not hard. Clear glass is one of those things people think is so difficult to do, but it's not. You look at this. We've got here, I'll set it down so you can, you can see. We have a bright, bright highlight, a couple softer highlights, a darker color, and a mid-tone color. Let me show you. I did this painting. This took 22 minutes start to finish, and that was with doing some other things while I was working. So it's going to be a less than 20 minute painting on how to paint this whole thing. I'm using a wooden box. It's just a cradled wood box. I love these for painting on because you don't have to worry about the canvas going all wobbly on you. I painted the background this beautiful bright orange. And you look at this and you go, well, why did you paint it bright orange? It gives a certain glow that you can't really see unless you're right up on the painting. There's tiny, tiny bits of that orange sort of popping through here and there and being that warm complementary color to this beautiful blue. It's just yummy. I painted this little flower in the glass vase. You can do this too. Come along, follow step by step with me and I'll show you how. All right, let's go. I am, like I said, using a cradled board for the painting and it's already been painted with yellow and orange just let dry really well before you start. It's an eight inch by eight inch square. And the reference photo that's up in the corner is basically just to give me a starting place for where my flower is going to start from. It really has only the inspiration going for me there. I'm taking a mixture of ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, and white and a much too small brush <laughs> because I grabbed it and started using it. I am putting that over the entire top of the canvas or board, and then I will be letting it dry a little bit before I get uh, started on the flower and the glass. Now, when you're doing things like this, let yourself just sort of relax and go with it. I'm using that reference also to give me a direction for my light. The light is coming from the left. The shadows will be more on the right. But my ending uh, painting is fairly evenly lit. There's a little bit of some variation, but not too much but I loved the process. I did not talk while I was painting this. I came in and had extra paint on my palette from doing 16 paintings over two days and decided I needed to use some of that before it dried up and went bad on me. So I just went in and started painting. So we're putting in a soft kind of cloudy sky type of background very very gentle very uh, peaceful and this would be a beautiful painting to do for somebody that you care about to brighten up your day to put a little spark in an office cubicle make a card 
any of those things. And really doing it on paper and making cards is a great way to practice because these are skills that build on each other. And look at, I am just dipping in to the blues and the whites. And really I'm mixing it on this, on this board. That's what I'm doing. And you can do this too. You have all of the skills necessary if you can in some way hold a paintbrush. Whatever way that works for you. If you're holding it with your hand, if you're holding it with your foot, if you're holding it with your teeth. I have people that have contacted me that have said that they're mouth painters. They hold their paintbrush in their mouth and they paint. So cool. And I admire that that willingness to try whatever it takes to make something creative and to bring beauty into their world and into our world. So yeah, we're just going to let this continue and then we will do the flower and then we will do the glass. I like to put my flower in first or my flowers in first before I put the vase in or bottle or whatever to make sure that the bottle or whatever doesn't take over the entire painting and push all the flowers out because I am known for getting my proportions a little bit skewed from time to time. So yeah, that's the way I do it. Now you can do it whatever way makes you happy, whatever way brings you joy. I think that it's the act of being creative that is the most important here. And really, it's not having the flower look exactly like the flower in the reference photo, because this one doesn't. I got the shape from the reference photo, but not the colors. And I didn't even use the shape of the vase in this painting, but I used the placement of the vase of the proportion, how high it needed to come up on the stem to hold the flower to make it look like it wasn't falling out of the painting. Those are the types of things that I think about. The little puzzles that you can work through as you're, you know, building your painting. Sometimes it's nice to go in and work the background around and leave the open space with your original color on the canvas. And I showed how to do that in my birthday video. So if you go back and you watch the birthday video, that's a vlog video, but I only vlog for about the first four minutes. And then I go into the real time painting of a bouquet of flowers and the vase. I am now using magenta and white and a little bit of the blue that is in my brush. The background is not totally dry, so it's allowing some of that color to come up and tone my flower. And then I'm picking up some more blue to add into the flower. I'm just being very loose and very just letting the brush hit a color on the palette and bring it over and paint with it. That is making me so happy. Oh, I never told you what colors the paint that I'm using. I'm using the Artist Loft Level 3 acrylic paint. You could do this with gouache. You could do this with a regular, you know, any acrylic paint. You can do this with uh, kids poster paints anything will work. It is an opaque paint. So remember that you need something that's opaque because you are actually layering your colors on top of each other. Now this is supposed, supposed to be, I'm, I'm doing little air quotes around supposed to be, it's a fantasy flower, but it's based on a tulip. So it's based on a tulip the original tulip was just a single layer of petals. I made mine a fancy frilly tulip. This could be, could be a peony. It could be a rose. 
it uh, all depends on the kind of leaves that you put in if you put leaves in. Okay, we're getting ready to do the glass now and I want you to watch how this goes in so quickly. You find your shape and then I, I like to put a little bit of a lighter color in on top of the background. The background's already my mid-tone. Right now I'm finding my shape, kind of getting it balanced. It got painted in all white. It didn't have to because I go back and I put the darker color back inside the background color. <laughs> it's one of those things. I am showing you real, real time, real life. This is how it happened. And I changed the shape of the jar and I made it the shape I wanted it to be, not the shape that the original was. So starting off here, I just got my shape in. I could, like I said, I could have left a lot more of the background color showing because I'm going to be putting it back in. But you know, that's, it's, it's all a learning process, but it's so, so much fun to do this. I had some little glass jars, like those ones that I showed you at the very beginning, sitting next to me so that I could look at him and find out where the highlights are, where the shadows are. And you see how I'm starting to pull that background color in and starting to build that darker tone inside again. So I'm building my mid-tone back in. The white that's on here is not the highlight. The white that's on here is actually going to be blended into that mid-tone. But that's, you know, that's how this one went in. See, I'm just, I'm working those darker colors in. Oh, look at that. When you put the, that bright highlight right there and you put a highlight on the table and then a shadow on the table, it totally changed it from being this flat thing into being a glass. Really and truly, that you could stop right there and you would not have to go back and do any other thing to it and it would work as a glass jar. I do go back in and put a little bit more dark into it and a little bit more of the kind of local color reflecting off the outside in part of the highlights. But, you know, I need to get the table on so that it has some place to sit. <laughs> okay. 
just fiddling around with it now that I'm going to do but it's it really it's done if you look across through the glass you can even see that I gave more of that left more of that light colored weight at the bottom it's really weird to say light colored weight but that sort of lighter space that makes it look like you can see the table through the glass little things little tiny cues to the eye that make you think oh there's a thick edge on there because there's some shadow glass has shadows <laughs> glass has highlights and glass has midtones you see what i what i mean about i didn't need to paint the whole thing in white though i could have left it the background color and just put in a few touches of the white and the darker blue and that makes my whole thing I did not use any black on this until the very end when I put the little pollen shoes on the stamens I, I don't know what they're called I'm sorry please if you know what that's called tell me in the comments below I'd really like to know <laughs> but yeah this is now for the next three or four minutes is just doing some touching up some bringing in some more highlights and shadows in the flower and really just wrapping up the end of the painting see how quick this was you can do it you can do it and you don't have to do it fast you can do it in stages you could paint your background let it dry you can then paint your flower let it dry go in and paint your bottle your vase your your cup your whatever you're painting to hold your flower so i went in and i put some reflection of the flower color on the glass because there would be some the glass is facing the light the flower is facing the light there's kind of a shadow of the flower on the glass but the shadow is being illuminated so it's a reflection color yeah oh yeah use your fingers if you need to these are all non-toxic paints I don't have a problem um, I don't have any paint allergies with my skin so I do go in and touch paint titanium white is also one of the least toxic of the acrylic paints to touch um, so perfectly safe to go in and smudge your paint with your fingers just wash your hands and if you know you're going to do that put some lotion on your hands first it makes it easier to wash them off but now dropping in that last little shadow underneath and reflecting some of that shadow up into the base by doing that it gives the jar glass vase whatever weight and it makes it feel like it's sitting on top of something you don't know how many times you will see a picture done by somebody who's not as experienced and there everything is floating nothing feels like it has weight or is attached to a table or the ground because there's no shadows you've got to get some shadows in there and like I said earlier I did not use black for any of my shadows I used Prussian blue for my darkest blues and I would mix it with a little bit of white to lighten up a shadow then I would pick up a little bit of some of the magenta with that Prussian blue so that everything stayed in the same color family just because my palette looks like a you know a color bomb went off on it I really I used Prussian blue ultramarine blue phthalo blue magenta and a little bit of a teal and lemon yellow phthalo green and I did use a little touch of black on the tops of the stamens for those little pollen shoes I I think I'm always going to call them pollen shoes now even though 
once I find out what they're called. I'm going to pop up a few more pictures here of paintings that I did. All of these paintings were approximately 15 to 30 minutes long. Some were really fast, some were really uh, not very fast. They were a little bit more considered, but they all were glass. They all had the same steps done to them. So if you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, come back and watch it again, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want more little bit talking type videos like this where I'm sharing um, actual lessons, please let me know. I would love to do this. This really is a lot easier for me to do than the vlog videos for some reason. So yeah. <laughs> Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.